All right, so we are live uh, today. So I am traveling. I'm at my, I'm going to be traveling. So I'm gone this week, next week, a couple of days the week after. So I came out here for about 16, 17 days. Has anybody ever heard of Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri? So I have a lake house here. I uh, pretty much Airbnb it out when I'm not here, but I definitely will come here a little bit in the summer, three, four weeks at a time here and there. Sometimes I'll come in the fall and just feel the leaves because we don't have that in Scottsdale, Arizona. So today uh, I'm going to go live here for the next 20 minutes. I'm going to give you kind of a smaller lesson than I normally do on Tuesdays because my internet doesn't work that good here in this lake house. Uh, today we're going to go over how do you respond? What do you say? More importantly, what do you ask? When the prospect says, you know, we really like this, but we just don't have the money for this, or we just don't have the budget for this, you know, can you call me back in a, a week, a month, a, a year later? Now, if you lose sales, because now we're going live here on Instagram phone, uh, we've got 370 4,000 of you or something follow me around here on IG. So we're going live here on the Instagram phone. Hello, guys. And we're also going live here on my desktop using StreamYard. So we're going live in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. I think there's about 65,000 of you in that Facebook group. We're going live here in the Facebook business page. There's about 90,000 of you run around there. LinkedIn, also our YouTube channel. Love you guys on YouTube and my personal Facebook. So when I go back and forth from the IG phone over here, over to uh, my desktop here. It's not because I'm ignoring you guys, just because I'm going back and forth. So how do you overcome the money or we don't have the budget objection really for any industry? It's probably the biggest objection that really any industry gets. It doesn't really matter what you do. There's a few expect you know, there's a few exceptions to that, but for the most part, 98, 99% industries are going to have some type of money uh, or budget um, objection. So we're going to help you overcome that. Now, I don't have my vibe board here because I'm not in our offices. So I normally wouldn't go live in our, on our, in our corporate offices in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. So I've got a vibe board. And I could write stuff out for you guys. I don't have that here at the lake house. You just got a lake behind me. And I'm sitting in the freaking kitchen here going live for you guys. But I threw a computer up here in Isaac or video over put some videos around here to make it look as cool as possible. So... You're just going to have to write what I tell you. Now, I am going to share my screen. So if you're on StreamYard, if you're on the Facebook group, LinkedIn, or YouTube, I'm going to share my screen there. I think I figured out how to do that on StreamYard. And I'll actually share with you the actual questions to ask. If you're on IG, I can't do that. I'm sorry. It won't let me. So you're just going to have to like write this down frantically with wherever you're at. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and, and go over this. Now, if you are brand new, so if you just joined our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, or you just started following me on you, our YouTube channel or LinkedIn or the Facebook business page, or maybe you saw one of my reels that we do on IG or whatever, and you started following this dude. Uh, my name is Jeremy Mine. I'm the founder of 7th Level. Now, 7th Level, if you don't know, you should know, is a sales training organization that trains salespeople exactly like you, okay? Exactly like you, all right? Uh, we train salespeople like you, sales professionals like you, sales leadership like you, uh, sales uh, management like you, okay, uh, corporate leadership like you. We train coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, business owners like you, and we train you and your teams how to sell using techniques, certain questions, especially with your tone, that work with human behavior rather than work against it. What do I mean when I say work with human behavior rather than against it? See, most of you have been forced. Now, it's not your fault, but it is your problem. Most of you have been forced from your companies or the sales gurus. You've been forced that you needed to do all the work. You needed to pressure. You needed to push. You needed to close. You needed to overcome objections. You needed to chase. You needed to follow up. And you can do that if you want to stay at the income you're at now. But we train you, especially if you're our clients, I just give you little nibbles on these lives compared to where our clients go through. What we train you is we train you how to get your prospects to do all the work. Why are you doing all the work? It doesn't sound very fun. So we train you how to do your, get your prospects to do all the work, 
how to get your prospects to sell themselves, how to get your prospects to convince themselves, how to get your prospects to close themselves, and how to get your prospects to chase you. It's a lot more profitable. You don't have all the anxiety and frustration you do now. And I know you have it. Even if you're making six figures or multiple six figures, using traditional selling skills, playing the numbers, I know what you're going through. I've been in your shoes before. I know both paths, okay? One is far more profitable, far more easy than the other one. So that's what we train you. Now that's called NEPQ. That stands for Neural Emotional Persuasion Questions, okay? Because not only do we have to teach you the right questions, but we also have to teach you the tone in every question you ask. And I want you to write this down and I'm going to give you some examples of the money objection here. Your tone is how your prospect interprets why you're asking the question. Your tone is how your prospects interpret the meaning of your questions. Ken Phillips says, you got 10 more seconds here to get to your point. Ken, I'm going to take 15 seconds. But you just won't know how to overcome the money objection. If you're that upset, I'll just take, I'm going to take 45 seconds, Ken, just to make you mad, just to make you upset. You must be having a bad day. Somebody on IG, give Ken a Snickers bar because he's upset today that this guy in the hairdo, Jeremy, on my little vacation here to my lake house, is taking so much time explaining to you what human behavior works. I mean, what am I going to do, Ken? Give that man a Snickers bar. Somebody give Ken a Snickers bar on Instagram, all right? So we have to train you the right tone because that's how your prospect interprets the meaning behind every single question that you're asking. Because there's certain questions in your sales process that require more of a, you know, curious tone. John, when you said blank, how did you mean by that? See, that's a curious tone. Now there's other, <laughs> let's go kid, baby. Give that man a Snickers bar there in IG. I love you, Ken. I'm just being sarcastic. I'm just a sarcastic dude, if you know me. Uh, there's other questions in your sales process that require more of a, a challenging or, or skeptical tone. Well, what are the ramifications if you don't do anything about that? See, that's a challenging or skeptical tone, right? Now, you can't be challenging or skeptical in the first minute of a conversation because you don't have trust or credibility. That's further along, okay? Um <laughs> Everybody's getting mad at Ken. Ken, man, I'm sorry, dude. There you go. Give him a stickers bar. I need a stickers bar too. Now, there's other questions in your sales process that require more of a, a tone that shows more empathy. What's really holding you back, John? More concern. More of a concern tone. So when do you know how to change your tone and shift it, even in the middle of a question you're asking or what you're saying to them? That's what I'm talking about, using your tone and the right questions that trigger the prospect to let their guard down and open up to you. And if you don't know how to do that, that's why your prospects stay surface level with you. And when you ask questions, they give you three or four word answers or they stay vague and generalized. And then at the end, you get, I want to think it over. I need to keep looking around. I need to give more quotes. We don't have the money. It's too expensive. That's why you get most of the objections you get because you don't know how to get the prospect to open up and engage, period. Okay? All right. Now, if you're on the live right now, which I know a lot of you are doing, I want you to grab your phone. Hey, IG, what's up, guys? Grab your phone. See? There's my little string yard thing. There's the kitchen here at the lake house. I'm working out of my kitchen for you guys. Isn't that nice? Um, if you're on the phone, I want you to grab your phone and I want you to, Sam says, Ken is Karen. That's a good one, Ken. That was a good one, Sam. Sam Taylor, that's funny. Uh, so I want you to grab your phone and I want you to post hashtag live, okay? With 7th level, I went from selling two rocks a day for 10 cents a rock to 1,000 a day, $10 a rock. I love that. That's a good one. All right. So if you're on the live right now, post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, I'm going to have you post hashtag replay. So if you're on the live right now, go post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, I want you to post hashtag replay. Okay. Now, some of you are asking me like, how do we get trained by you? What do we do? Okay. So if you're not a client yet, uh, we have 26 different sales training courses. We don't have like one course with one price with one way. Uh, it all depends on the industry you're in now. 
uh, the commissions you're making, okay? Like if you're making three grand, five grand, eight grand, 12 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand, with what you're already doing, we just put you in different training programs based on your skill level so far, okay? So once we understand those details and really what you want to make, then our team members that you'd be booked with, they will show you which training programs for your industry is going to give you the quickest uh, increase in sales, if that makes sense, so you make more money. So if you're somebody that's on here watching me all the time and you're like, hey, the free stuff is really good, but like I said, it's very basic because in our virtual training programs, I don't train any of that on the lives, just so you know. I'm just giving you little tips on here. I don't train you exactly what connection questions are, how to use your tone, to open them up, situation, problem awareness, solution awareness, questions, consequence questions, how to structure your presentation exactly the word for word right way. I don't teach you how to do any of that on these. I just give you little tips, little nuggets, little, little not even gold nuggets. They're like bronze nuggets. They're like not even gold. Okay. So if you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions in your industry, or if you want to start making your first 15 grand every month in your industry, or if you want to start averaging 20,000 every month with what you sell, or 25, or 30, or 40, or 50,000 a month in your industry, or higher, I can assure you we are training probably thousands of other salespeople in your industry right now that are making that money every single month, month after month after month, okay? No different than you. You know, they have hair, they drink water, they eat food, they have problems with their family, they have trials and tribulations, the only reason why they're making two, three, five times more than you are every month or even higher is because they've acquired more of an advanced sales ability. They understand how to work with human behavior rather than work against it. And that's why they are crushing you. I hate to say this right now with what you sell. So if you want to acquire those skills, just message me directly right now. So if you're on LinkedIn or the Facebook group or my Facebook or the business page or IG, message me directly right now and either myself or one of my stunt doubles, I have many stunt doubles, uh, will message you back um, some different options. And, you know, if it's something that you want to do, if you're wanting to sell more, they'll let you book with one of our team members. We have, I don't know, 40 some, 50 some team members now that will go over all the different training options we have if you want to make far more than what you are now. So just message me directly. It's nice and easy. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, how do we do this? So let me share my screen here on StreamYard. I'm going to try to figure out how to share my screen. I should have done that before I got on here. Hold on one second. Group layout. How do I share my screen? Screen layout. Screen layout. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let's see. See what I got here. <laughs> I should have done this before. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. No, no, no. We don't want that. We don't want that. New layout, edit layout. That will sign off. Oh, hold on. Good Lord. Good Lord. All right. So let's see. Setting, share my screen here. I'm going to share my screen here on StreamYard and IG. You guys are just going to have to pay attention for a second. You'll just have to kind of remember what I'm saying here. Okay. All right. Uh, share my screen. Isaac, do you know how to share screen on this thing? I remember how to do this. Uh, dang it. I've, I haven't shared my screen on StreamYard for like two years. Because I always have the vibe board behind me. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Well, we're trying to figure it out. Hold on one second. You, if you be patient, I've got some good stuff that I wrote out for you. So you can literally take screenshots of it. How to overcome this objection. Uh, yes. Broadcast studio. There's a toolbar at the bottom of the screen. Broadcast studio. Where is a toolbar at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. And this, there's a share button. Share button. Where's the share button? Sh show me. Show me on there. Uh, it just has the... Do, is there like a thing? I have to click on it so I can see it because I don't see a share button. If anybody knows how to do it on on uh, StreamYard, why don't I have a share screen? I don't have share screen. What the hell? Mm, I don't have that. I have a present button. Would it be present? Oh, slides. Oh, share screen. Yes. There it is. Cool. Okay, share screen. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go, here we go. Now, I don't want to do window. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, hold on. Now, I think I got it, baby. I think I got it. Hold on. Ah, okay. 
Uh, it's a little bit small, but we'll have to deal with it. All right. Hopefully you guys can see that on StreamYard. I've got the little screen share there. Hopefully you guys can see that. Can you guys see that on StreamYard? Okay. You guys are in a much better position than everybody on IG, but I'm sorry, guys, on IG. All right. Okay, let's go over this real quick. Uh, Aaron says he can't really see it. You're just going to have to enlarge your screen, guys. There's nothing I can do, okay? All right. So how do you overcome? All right, so IG, you guys are going to have to shake and bake, baby. Hit the shake. Sam knows. Sam knows me and Matt, I guess. I can't share my screen on IG, guys. Sorry. I'm not at the office here. I don't have the buy board, so you guys are just going to have to pay attention to IG. So how do you overcome the we don't have the money objection? All right? All right, so... Type in me if you lose sales, and let me see how I can, hold on. Type in me. All right, Isaac, I need to understand how to scroll down when I'm sharing the screen. It's not letting me scroll down. Not letting me scroll down, Isaac. How do you scroll down? Like it's not letting me scroll down on the screen. So they're not going to be able to, they're just going to see the very top of that. So they're not going to be able to see that because it's not letting me scroll down. All right, we got We just got to go, try to figure that out if you can. Okay. All right. So how do you overcome? So what do you say when the prospect says, we don't have the money? Now, I really like this, James, but we just don't have the money. I really like this, Mary, but we just don't have enough. We don't have the budget for it. So if you lose sales from this objection, what I want you to do in the comments is type in me. If you lose sales from this objection every single day, every single week, all of that, then type in me. Okay, uh, you can zoom in within your doc to 150%. Oh, you know, ooh, I don't even know what. It gives you an option to share your... Oh, uh, okay, yeah, 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 I, I see it now. I know what I was doing wrong. I finally figured it out. Technology challenged here, okay? All right, so I will try to do this on my screen here as fast as I can. Now, i got to open that up for you guys. Okay, let me try to do this. All right, so I'm going to open this up to 150%. All right, can you guys see that? Okay, IG, you won't be able to see it because I can't share my screen on the phone here. All right. Oh, okay. you guys are good. All right, so how do you overcome the we don't have the money objection? All right, now. Here's what, I, here's what I want you to focus on first before I show you exactly what to say and what to ask here to help them overcome it to go out and get the money. Um, write this down. It's not like the money does not exist. Now, if you're selling a $10 million solution to somebody that has $100, which is unlikely because if you're selling that high price solution, you're pretty much selling to big corporations, right? It's not like the money does not exist. Okay, I don't care what you're selling. If you're talking with a prospect, whether it's B2C or B2B, that's responded to some type of ad, okay? That's put in their name and phone number to have you call them back like an outbound lead, or it's an inbound lead that's booked on your calendar, or even if it's a cold call and you're targeting uh, companies, let's say you're B2B and you're cold call and you're targeting companies, it's not like the money does not exist, okay? I want you to reframe the way you think about money. The money, and I'm not talking about, you know, you know, uh, the secret where you're just willing money into, into being by your thoughts. Okay. That's not probably realistic when you're talking with prospects. The money is there. It's just what you're offering is not a priority to that prospect on where they're already currently spending that same money at. So let me repeat myself. The money is there, but what you're offering they are not taking the money that they're already spending on something else and making what your solution is the number one priority to then move that money from what they were spending it on over to what you're wanting them to buy. So I want you to think about that. The money exists. So write that down. The money is already there. It's just what you're offering because you don't understand how to build the gap from where they are to where they want to be is not a priority to them yet on what they're already spending that same money on. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so the money's already there. It's just a priority of where they want to spend that same money, okay? And that's your job as the sales professional to help the prospect see that your solution is a much bigger priority for them than the where they're currently already spending that same money. 
Now type in me if you want to learn how to do that. Type in me if you want to learn how to do that. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So let me give you an example of this. I'm going to give you a deliberately generic example. Okay? So you can plug in your own industry and tailor your product or service to sell. Now we train 158 different industries, including yours. Watch me right here. Do you know how many industries there are in the world? According to Forbes magazine, there's only 158, which is surprising. I thought there was a lot more. Now there's subsets of each of those industries, but we are in all of those industries at this point. Okay. So I'm going to give you a generic example, and then I'm going to show you a few industry specific examples so you can see how to plug in what you sell. I, I can't show you 158 different examples. We'd be on here for two days. Okay. So this is deliberately generic. All right. Prospect says, Hey, we really like your product, but at this time we just can't afford it. Here's what you're going to say first. Now, IG, you have to pay attention to me because I don't have my buy board to write it down. You guys on StreamYard, I'm sharing my screen with a document I made, I typed out just for you guys because I was nice this morning. All right. So they said, you know, we really like this, but it, this time we just can't afford it. Now, here's what you're going to do first to flip the script. Okay. Because what they just did to you is kind of help is really took your power away, your status. Some people call it status or authority. It's called a status frame, authority frame, power frame. Okay. If you've ever read like Oren Clapp, he talks about that social dynamics. Between Oren and I, I don't I don't think I've ever read a sales book that actually talks about social dynamics because 99% of sales trainers out there don't understand behavioral science because they never went through that in school like I did. I'm I i do not know if Oren did or not, but he understands social dynamics. So we have to flip that script. Okay. And I'm going to say, the process, you know, we really like your product, but at this time we can't afford it. You're going to lean in and say, that could be, um, that could be a problem for you. Now, let me analyze why I just did that. And I'm going to show you what to do next. When they say, I just can't, I don't have the money. I can't afford it. You're going to lean in and say, with a concern tone, concern, you're going to say, that could be a problem for you. I'm sure. Now, why would I want to say that that could be a problem for them? See what I just shifted? I just shifted it over to them that it's their problem, not mine. Why is it a problem for me? I already have what they want. I'm the one that has the solution. I hold the keys to the kingdom to solve their problems and get them where they want to go. See, that's how you have to think about what you're offering. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, we're going to go through it after what to do after that. But you're first going to lean in and say, it could be a problem for you. Here's what you're going to do. Write this down. It could be a problem for you. Um, tell me, if you did have the money, if you did have the funding, if you did have the funds, it could be money, funding, or funds, depending on what you sell. Most industries, you can say funds. There are some industries you would say funding. There are some industries you'd say money. Do not say budget, okay? If you sell B2B or B2C and you continually say, you know, uh, what type of budget do you have? What type of thinking are you getting your prospects into? Budget thinking. Do you want your prospects to sit there and type out their little budget? I don't care if it's a Fortune 500 company or a mom and dad that you're in their home or on Zoom. You don't want your prospect thinking budget-based thinking because that's like poor-based thinking. Okay, and most of you are like, oh, I don't have the budget. You want to get them in a different way of thinking. So don't use the word budget. It's not good for you. Okay. So you're going to lean in and say, that could be, could be a problem for you. Um, tell me, if you did have the funds, is this something that would work for you? Tell me, if you did have the funds, is this something that would work for you? Now, why would I do that? Because 99% of the time, they're going to say this. They're going to say, yes, it would. Or they're going to say, yes, it would, but I don't have the money. And that's okay. What I want to hear at this point is, yes, it would, okay? There's not going to be anybody, by the time you got through your whole sales process, it's like, nope, nope, it's not what I'm looking for. Now, it's not because the objection they gave you is they don't have the money, okay? If they didn't like it, they wouldn't give you that. They'd tell you a different objection, okay? Tell me, if you did have the funds, is this something that would work for you? Yeah, I, I, yeah, it would for sure. Now, here's what you're going to do next. Well, hold on, why do you feel like it would, though? Now, what did my tone sound there? Well, now, why do you feel like it would though? What type of tone did I just use there? Can anybody tell me? Can anybody tell me what my tone just sounded like there when I shifted it? Okay. Hold on. Why do you feel like it would? 
It's kind of like a, a curious tone, right? That's what I'm doing right there. See what I just did? Hold on. Why do you feel like it would though? Well, the reason why I like it is this, this, and this. And they start to tell me, you, why they like it. But more importantly, who are they telling why they like it? They're telling themselves. Do you want your prospect to tell themselves why they like what you're offering? I would think so. Now, sometimes it'll go like this. Yeah, I do for sure. I, I really see where we would need that, but we just don't have the money for it. They'll say it again. And then you say, well, money aside, why do you feel like it would though? Well, money aside, see what I just did? Well, money aside, why do you feel like it would though? See what I just did there? I shifted it. Well, money aside, why do you feel like it would though? Doesn't mean I can't, I'm not going to come back around, but I'm going to say, well, money aside, why do you feel like it would? Well, I like it because of this, because of that, because of that. And here's where you're going to start moving this, okay? Then you're going to say something like this, okay? And make sure you write this down if you're on IG and you can't see my screen here that I've got on stream. You're going to say, okay, and I can appreciate that money might be an issue for you from what you told me earlier. I guess, how do you feel you can resolve that where you can find the funds so that you can, and then you repeat back what they said they want? Let me go over that again for you guys on IG because I don't have my buy board here. I'm not at my office. Um, okay, I can appreciate that money might be an issue from what you said. I guess, how do you feel like you can resolve that where you can find the funds so that you can and you're going to repeat back what they said they wanted? Here, what you're doing is you're plugging in what they said they wanted. You're tying in them getting the funding or the money with having what they said they wanted. If they can't get the funding or the money, they don't get what they said they wanted. If they can get the funding, they get what they want. If they don't get the funding, they don't get what they want. See how you're tied in then getting the money or funds with what? The end result. This is how you get the prospect into results-based thinking over price or cost-based thinking. You're tied in the funding, the money with the end result. It's one in the same. You guys haven't, most of you haven't learned how to do that unless you're one of our clients. You're like, Money, solution are two different things. What you have to learn is how to get them to feel that them getting the funding gets them what they said they wanted, which is the end result. Are you seeing what we're talking about there? I've seen people close to 75% plus use the method. Well, they're probably your clients. Okay, you can buy my book at Barnes & Noble. Just go on the Barnes & Noble website if you want to buy the book. I think Alex, just go to Barnes & Noble, type in Jeremy Miner, new model of selling, you can buy it there. Okay, let's keep going. Now, some people at this point, when you do that, they'll start internalizing it. They're like, well, you know, I could get the money from, and they'll go over some ways that maybe they can get the funding. If you sell B2C, you know, depending on your price points, I mean, if you're selling life insurance, it's a small monthly payment, typically compared to if you're selling some real estate coaching program for 20 grand, a little bit of a different price point. But if you're selling B2C, they'll start thinking like, maybe I could get it from my investments or my 401k or Maybe I can get a, a small loan or just whatever. You'll have people that maybe like, you know, put the money against the title of the car. I've seen it all. If you're in B2B, a little bit different. They might start thinking of ways to, you know, pull fund or pull the budget from a different department over to their department. I mean, there's different things that they'll do once you get them to internalize. Now, that doesn't mean everybody's going to go for it right there. You'll still have a lot of people like, oh, I don't really know. I, I just don't have ways. Like some people will say that. And so then you're going to go through your second attempt and you're going to say, well, what other avenues do you have? So if they say, if they come back from that last question, like, I just don't know, I'm not sure what ways I have, well, what other avenues do you have to find the funding so that you can? And here you're going to repeat back the second thing they said they want. The second thing they said they want. See how I'm getting them tying in the funding or the money to get what they said they wanted. Okay. Now, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a few different examples of this second question. See where I said, well, what other avenues do you have to find the funding so that you can? And I'm repeating back the second thing. So I'm going to give you like seven or eight different industry examples, industry specific examples. Okay. I'm trying 158 industries. I can't give them all to you. There are time. And you can see how to tailor it to what you do. Okay. Now, in this first example, let's say if you sold pest control door to door. Who in here sells pest control? I've trained a ton of people in pest control. Probably thousands at this point as well. I've trained lots of tens of thousands in door-to-door -door sales, anything. Home security, solar, pest control, roofing, everything. You can HVAC, vacuum cleaners, rainbow vacuum cleaners. I got rainbow vacuum cleaner 
salesmen out there making 70, 80 grand a month. And you thought they're all poor. Well, they are. They don't have the right skills. They understand EPQ really easy. Okay. So let's say if you sold pest control, I'm going to lean in. Well, what other avenues do you have to find the funds to stop the brown recluses from nesting and breeding in the home? If that was their concern, they saw a brown recluse. Or well, what other avenues do you have to find the funds to make sure the brown recluses aren't nesting and breeding in the home? Now, what did my tone sound like? Concerned tone. You see what I'm doing then? Well, what other avenues do you have to find the funds to make sure the brown recluses aren't nesting and breeding in the home though? Now, if I'm talking to a mom and we're talking about brown reclusing recluses nesting and breeding in the home, which happens if you don't have the right pest control, do you think that's possibly going to concern her that her children might get bit by a brown recluse? Now, notice I'm not asking it in a manipulative way. What if I said this? Well, what other avenues do you have to make sure that your kids don't get bit by this dangerous spiders? See, that's like a douche move. But see how I lower my tone? We train thousands in payment processing too. Yeah, all your industries. Are, do you train us? Yes, we train every industry on planet Earth. I don't know what to tell you. We train gutter protection. I've got, I've got one of the top three salespeople in the entire United States that sells for, uh, uh, they do gutter protection. They're called Leaf something. You see the commercials on TV. He's like their number two or number three guy in the entire industry. He makes like, I don't know, 60, 70 grand a month now in commissions. Okay. Train tons of people. He's in our advanced inner circle program. That's how I know. Yes, we train educational technology. We train software. Yes, we train all that stuff. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, let's say if you sold fitness coaching or weight loss. Type in me if you sell any type of fitness coaching. If you're a, a trainer in fitness or you help people lose weight or you have really big muscles or they look really good in a bikini after you get done with it. We train thousands in that space as well. Somebody said, you already trained my boss, LOL. Bes beside of Julia, there you go. Leaf, yes, leaf filter, yes, leaf filter, there you go. Mr. No Time. No, MLMs are the only thing we do not train on planet Earth. So when I say we train every industry, that would include your industry, network marketing, email. we train tens of thousands in that space too. Okay, there you go. Snapping companies, yes, 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 yes. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Now, be so fitness coaching. What do you do there? All right. You Let's say that this, the gentleman you're talking to in this example is maybe in his late 40s, early 50s. And he has a concern that he's 100 pounds overweight. And if he doesn't change his situation, yes, we train tens of, the, what, I don't say tens of thousands. I mean, we, we train thousands in solar. One company, Power Solar, has 9,000 plus salespeople that we train. So yes, train lots of people in solar too. Okay. Um, okay. I know you guys have a lot of questions, but I got to finish this train. I'm going to be here for three hours. So let's see this example. You, you're talking to a guy or even a lady, doesn't matter. And let's say they're overweight by 90 to 100 pounds or late 40s, early 50s. And they're afraid that, well, they could have a heart attack if they don't lose that weight. Okay, or your questions allow them to see that. And they're afraid that they might not be able to walk their daughter down the aisle when she gets married. I'm going to lean in. If they give me a money objection, I'm going to say, well, what other avenues do you have to find the funds so you're able to lose that 80 pounds? So like you had mentioned, you're able to walk your daughter down the aisle when she gets married. What other avenues do you have to find the funds to lose the 80 pounds to make sure you're able to walk your daughter down the aisle when she gets married, John? What did my tone sound like? Concerned tone. See what I'm doing there? I'm tying in him getting the money with what? The end result. Losing the weight so he can what? Walk his daughter down the aisle. You see, I'm tying in them getting the money, the funds, to the end result. You see what we're doing there? Okay, let's see if you sold HVAC. Train thousands in HVAC as well, Okay. What other, what other avenues do you have to find the funds to replace this old system to make sure the cool air is going up in your bedroom so you can sleep at night? If that was their problem, let's say the rest of their house was nice and air conditioned, but for some reason, up in the top corner of that house, it gets really hot. And when John and Cindy go to bed every night, they wake up in the morning and they're just sweating. They don't like it, okay? Because... The airflow is not evenly put in the house because they have an old system. See what I'm doing? Let's see if you sold rental or commercial properties. Train tons of people in that space. Well, what other avenues do you have to find the funding to 
put into this rental property so you're getting a greater return on your money. If that was their concern. See, it doesn't matter what you're selling. You're just tying in the end result to them getting the money. Let's say you sold windows for health sake. We have salespeople that sell windows and cabinets remake remodels and bathroom remodels. Salespeople that work for companies that make 30, 50, 80 grand plus a month in commissions now. That when they came here a year ago were broke. What other avenues do you have to find the funds to put in the windows so that you're not forced to overpay your utility bills every month? Well, what other avenues do you have to find the funding to put into the XYZ windows to make sure you're not forced on overpaying your utility bills every month? Because they're paying higher utility bills because they have old windows and the air keeps getting sucked out, doubling their utility bills. See how I'm tying that end result in? Okay. All right. Let's go through another one. A couple of other ones. All right. I'd show you every industry, but I just don't have time. Okay. Uh, there's the home improvement one. I just sh uh, showed, shared that to you guys here on uh, StreamYard. Okay, let's say if you're a real estate agent, we're trained thousands of real estate agents. Anybody know who Ryan Serhant is? The uh, star from the Bravo star, Million Dollar List in New York. Well, there you go. He's one of our clients as well. Been with us for over two years, okay? So there you go, trained lots of real estate agents. What other avenues do you have to find the funding to use as a down payment so that you're able to get your, your family into this more exclusive neighborhood, if that's what they wanted. Let's say they wanted to get out of a neighborhood because there was more crime there and into a safer neighborhood. See how I can just change it if you're a real estate agent? What other avenues do you have to find the funding to put down as a down payment so you're able to get your family into this safer neighborhood? See, I'm using the funds they need for the down payment so they can what? Get their family into the safer neighborhood. Or maybe if they're very, very wealthy. They want to be in more of an exclusive gated community. Okay. See what we're doing there? Let's see who in here uh, sells for a marketing agency. We train tons of people in that space too. What other avenues do you have to find the funding to start getting these higher quality leads so your salespeople make more money for you guys? What other avenues do you have to find the funding to get the higher quality leads so you guys can really scale the business if I'm selling to a small business owner? See what I'm doing? It's all the same. It doesn't matter what industry. I mean, we train all 150 different industries, including yours. Okay, here you go. Here's other ones. Let's say if you sold mortgage protection insurance. So when one spouse dies, their house gets paid off, or at least the monthly payments get paid for a year or two while they sell the house in more of a, a market that's you know not a down market. Okay, well, it could be general life insurance too. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Hey, Jeremy, I'm a fan of your education. I'm in moving sales and your stuff is super helpful. You're welcome. You're training tons of people in that space. Make sure you're one of our clients though because the free stuff I give you on here wouldn't cover any of that stuff. Okay, cyber. Okay, so mortgage protection. What other avenues do you have to find the funds so when you pass away, the house is completely paid off and now Cindy and the kids are financially protected? What other avenues do you have to find the funds so when you pass away, the house gets paid off and sending the kids are financially protected. See how I'm tying that end result in to him getting the funding or her getting the funding to get the policy to pay off the house? See what I'm doing there? Okay. Uh, how about cybersecurity to big banks and businesses? We train thousands and well, we train thousands in life insurance for sure. It's probably one of the biggest industries you're trained. We train tons in cybersecurity too. Well, what other now see it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more stale, but you've got to talk like this when you're talking to like big banks. Let's say you're talking to Bank of America, Wells Fargo. What other avenues do you have to find the funding to protect your digital enrollment process from incurring high fraud losses? What other avenues do you have to find the funds to make sure that your digital enrollment process is protected from incurring high fraud losses if you sold cybersecurity? See what we're doing there? Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be even nice here, nicer here. All right, so I'm going to give you all the way from A to Z, an industry-specific example, so you can see how the structure works. Okay, now if you're on IG, you're just going to have to listen to me because I'm traveling. I don't have my live board here. I'm not at the office today. I shared my screen here with everybody here on uh, StreamYard that's on our YouTube channel and our Facebook group, Says Revolution, and LinkedIn. Now, if you're on IG and you want to see this, just go to our Facebook group. Go to salesrevolution.pro. Salesrevolution.pro, you can see this whole screen that I'm showing right here on StreamYard, salesrevolution.pro. Okay, 
Now in this example, let's say that you sell e-commerce training. Okay, like Amazon as FBA and all those, you know, Shopify. Let's say you have some training course. You work for some company that teaches people how to have a successful business, uh, you know, using Amazon. What is it? SBA, FBA, I don't know, FBA, uh, Shopify, all that stuff. So you got an e-commerce source, but what you have is you work for a company that trains people how to set them up, you know, write ads, write copy, and really make money selling products online, like legitimate products. Okay, so they say, yeah, we really like this, but we just don't have the money for it. That could be. Um, that could be a problem for you for sure. You're there. Pause a couple of seconds. Yeah, that could be a problem for you for sure. Now, why would I say that? Because you don't want to sound needy. You sound needy, it's over because you lower your status in your prospect's mind. Okay. Do you like hanging out with needy people? I tell you what, when you're out and about and some guy or girl walks up to you and flirts with you and then they get all needy, what goes on in your mind? Well, you don't like needy people, so you're not attracted to that. So why do you feel like your prospects are attracted to you when you're needy, trying to sell them something? They can feel it. They can feel your anxiety. That's why you trigger a lot of sales resistance, okay? See what we're doing here? Yeah, that could be a problem for you for sure. See, we're flipping that script. We're raising our status. It's their problem, not our problem. Now, we're not saying it's their problem, not our problem. We can't say that. That doesn't make any sense, okay? We're getting them to say that themselves. Yeah, that could be a problem for you for sure. Yeah, that could be a problem for you for sure. Tell me, if you didn't have the funding, is this something that would work for you? Yeah, that could be a problem for you for sure. Tell me though, if you, um, if you didn't have the funds, is this something that would work for you? Now, they're always going to say, now see how I slowed that down. See how I slowed that down. I don't want to say, tell me if you did have the funding, John, is this something that would work for you? Sound like a robot. You sound scripted. Tell me if you didn't have the funds. Is this something that would work for you? They'll always say yes if you do that right way. Yeah, for sure. Well, hold on. Why do you feel like it would though? Now that's an NEPQ probing question. Hold on. Why do you feel like it would? Well, I like it because of X and because of Y and because of Z. See what we're doing there? Okay. Now, we want to flip that script where they feel it's their problem, not our problem. And this is a massive difference, okay? Mr. Closer, thanks for being the only salesperson I take advice from. You're the goat. You're too nice. Uh, Anne's, is it Anne's Bogan? Are these via Zoom? Um, when we go live in the Facebook group, we use an app called StreamYard because I go live in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, has like 65,000 people in there. Facebook business page has like 90 some thousand, 100,000. YouTube and LinkedIn all at the same time on StreamYard. So if you're in the Facebook group, I think it's Anne, you'll see the lives as long as you like hit on when you join the Facebook group, like when I go live, it notifies you on Facebook, you'll see that. Okay. All right. Um, okay. All right. So now what if they come back and they say, well, yeah, I, I do, but I just don't have the money. So what do you do with the price? that says, I really like it, but I just don't have the money. Well, money aside, why do you feel like it would though? See what I did? Well, I just, you know, I, I really like it, Jim. We like this, this, this. We just don't have the budget. Well, money aside, why do you feel like it is? See, I'm saying money aside. Well, money aside, why do you feel like it is? Up? Oh, because of this, because of that, because of this. See what we're doing here? Okay. Jeremy, I love you and so does Jesus. Well, thank you. I hope he does because I love him. There you go. <laughs> I make mistakes, but I do my best. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, now they're going to come back. All right, so we got a poor connection here on... Uh, on uh YouTube. man i'm going for too long okay they're gonna come back like well i don't really know then you're gonna do this okay i can appreciate now this is industry specific what i'm showing you here just so you can see it. okay i can appreciate that money might be an issue how do you think you can resolve that where you can find the funding so you can start making profits in your stores if i'm selling e-commerce stores right see what i'm doing there okay if they that's industry specific now if they still traveling realtor nice here bro well thank you very much i put a lot of effort in Every morning, there you go. You got a bow dry, put moose in it, crazy stuff my salon lady does, you know, trying to make me look halfway decent. Now, if they still can't come up with ways, have you considered putting it on a credit card or just paying it off when you start making more profits when we set everything up with you? See, I'm curious. That's a curious town. Now, that's if you sell B2C. You wouldn't be able to do that if you sold B2B. Now, another way you can do that, because if you say, well, what other avenues do you have to find the funding so you can start making more money in the business? See, that's industry specific there. 
Okay. Now, if they still can't come up with ways, it's the same thing. Okay. If they still can't come up with ways, you're going to lean in and say this. Can I, um, can I make a suggestion to you? They'll always say yes. Well, what I can do is I can show you the avenues that our other clients use to find the funding, like if they don't have it themselves. And you'll have to see if you have some of those same avenues and then you're going to repeat back what they want. You have to see if you have some of those same avenues if you're wanting to you know, start your own business where you can make more money. Now, that's an industry-specific example because you wouldn't say that if you sold life insurance or if you sold fitness coaching or if you sold uh, you know, cybersecurity to large companies, you couldn't say those words. I'm just giving you an industry-specific example. Well, what I can do is I can show you the avenues that our other clients use to find the funds if they don't have it themselves. And you'll have to see if you have some of those same avenues if you're wanting to you know, start your own business where you can make more money. And I'm just repeating back what they said they wanted. See what I'm doing that? And you're going to go through those different avenues that your other clients use to find the funding. Could be, you know, if you're selling B2C, it could be, depending on the price point, it could be a loan. It could be, you know, uh, borrowing from the 401k or it could be home equity line of credit if it's a larger price point. If it's like insurance or something smaller, or pest control, it could be, you know, instead of spending 280 a month on cable, they could spend 150 and put the rest over. I mean, it could be instead of going out to eat, Four times a week, they go out to eat two times a week. I mean, there's different ways you can do that depending on your price points. And at the end of that, if you go through the different things that your clients do to find the funding, you say, what are those avenues do you have? Notice how my tone dips down into more of a concern. Tone. What are those avenues do you have? It's like a curious concern. Tone. What are those avenues do you have? See what we're doing there? Okay, I hope that helped everybody. It went way over. I got to get out of here. It's already almost 430 Central. I got to go to the chiropractor. I'm sitting on this kitchen here doing all this for you guys. I've been working for a couple hours. Back's all freaking messed up over there. We're going to stop the screen share. Um, and then IG, I hope that helped you guys. Like I said, I'm not in my office this day. I'm traveling. I'm at my lake house in Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. If you've ever been here, I'm going to be here this week and most of next, next week. And then uh, the first couple of days, May, I think I get back to the office like May 10th. Little, little relaxation I'm trying to do. I'm still working like five or six hours a day. What the hell? I wasn't supposed to work, but I'm still working. All right. Now, some of you are asking me, Jeremy, where do we get more training? What do we do? Because like I said, these these things I go over in the Facebook lives and on YouTube and on IG, you might see, you know, we do like 160 reels a month on IG and LinkedIn and YouTube shorts and even Facebook. I want to make sure you all understand. Those are very basic. They use, those are nibbles. I'm just giving you little tips, okay? If you want to be like our clients who are in the same industry as you and they're out earning you two, three, five times more than what you are, you'll want to be in our virtual training courses because all of that, I don't release any of that for free. I don't release any of that in the lives, no YouTube, nothing, no IG. I don't release any of that for free because I can't because I owe that to our clients who are in your industry. So if you want to start making your first 10 grand a month in commissions with what you sell or your first 15 grand a month, every month in your industry or 20 grand every month with what you sell or 25 or 30 grand every month with what you sell or 50 grand every month or more in your industry, I can assure you we are training, well, hundreds, if not thousands of salespeople in your industry that are making that much money every single month. They are kicking your butt. Not because they're cooler or they have cool hair or, you know, they're, they're, a, they're a woman and they have really nice fingernails. None of that really matters. You know what matters? Questions you've learned how to ask. <clears throat> how do you use your tongue to cause your prospects to let their guard down? <clears throat> how do you get them to overcome their own concerns? How do you get them to do all the work themselves, sell themselves, close themselves. That's what matters. That's why they're out earning you two, three, five times or more to one. So if you want to acquire those skills, message me directly right now. So if you're in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, and I put, if you want to join the Facebook group, it's right here. It's just the, it's right here on the, like if you're on YouTube or LinkedIn and you're not in our Facebook group, because we go live in there far more than we do on YouTube or LinkedIn or even IG, just go to our, uh, and Anne's Vogan, just join the Facebook group. Good for you. That's a good start. Um, the, there's a banner here for our Facebook group, sales revolution .pro. Uh, I even put my IG handle on there for you guys on YouTube. People have asked me on that. 
So make sure you go follow me there on IG and then also go join the Facebook group. Uh, but if you if you want to start making those type of dollars, make sure you message me directly right now, okay? Uh, YouTube, you won't be able to message me directly. There's no way for us to reply to your messages there because you just post up. So if you're in uh, LinkedIn or IG or the Facebook group or business page or my uh, Facebook, just message me directly. Either myself, one of my surrogates, my stunt devils will message you back. They'll have a kind of a chat with you to see what industry you're in, what you're making now compared to what you want to make, what you feel, certain words you're saying or questions you're not asking that are holding you back. And once they understand those details, um, you'll be able to book with one of our team members. We have, I don't know, 40 some people on the executive team. And what they'll do is they'll find out more details from you because we can't find all that out in chat. It'd be hard. And then they'll recommend which training program that we would put you in that is going to cause you to sell the most the soonest. Because if you're making two grand a month right now, we're not going to put you in a more advanced training, is, which is, is advanced inner circle. If you're already making 15 or 20 or 25 grand a month, you're like, how do I go to 30 or 40 or 50? We're going to put you more in our advanced training, which would be advanced inner circle or advanced NEPQ 3.0. If you're only making two or three, we're probably going to, or five, we're going to probably put you in our 2.0 training program. It just depends on where you're at and what industry you're in. Okay, hopefully that helped everybody. I'll be going live tomorrow in our Facebook group. Um, I think I'm going live at like 5 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Uh, every Wednesday, we interview a new client from a completely different industry on um, their sales process and what we've taught them as a client in EPQ. We go through their sales structure. And they're always dropping golden nuggets for you guys. Now, we only go live in the Facebook group on Wednesdays. So if you're on IG, we, we don't do that because I share the screen with that person so they can talk. So you wouldn't be able to see it on IG. So you have to join the Facebook group if you want to see that breakdown of their sales structure. We'll help you sell more for sure. Okay, everybody, I got to get out of here. I've got people to see. I've got hands to shake. I've got babies to kiss. And I'll see all you guys tomorrow inside the Facebook group when we go live. Thanks, everybody. Hey guys, if you enjoy these, here's another you can watch right over here, right over here. Join our free sales revolution group. Click the link below, join us, and we're going to help you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.